Welcome to Discovering. Most of us have probably seen a stock car race somewhere along the way. And for those that race, I'd have to imagine they can't wait for summer. And I mean, they can't wait for summer. They knocked the lights out, they took the plastic off the car, they put some steel rub rails on the car, and they went racing. First, it's a trip to Norway Mountain for Uperfest. That's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. It was a warm, sunny Saturday afternoon. A great day to be in the outdoors. A great day for winter activities. A great day for you, Professed. I took a drive to Norway Mountain to find out what it was all about. Neil Urban, Norway Mountain here. and We've got Uperfest here going on today. A uh, great family event. We've This is our second annual one. Our first year was a winter carnival, but we carried on uh, something that went on for many years before us, Uperfest, and it worked out nice. It's a sunny 32 degrees out, and as you can see behind us, we've got tons of snow. Uh, today, with all the events that we have, we have a cardboard box race, we have uphill snowmobile climb, frozen t-shirt contest, past eating contest. We've got the fire hose race. We had the tug of war. And of course we have live music starting this evening also. Frozen t-shirt contest, great thing. You know, that's an activity we found at another ski hill down in Wisconsin. And what we do is we tie a knot into a uh, t-shirt. We get it soaking wet and then we freeze it. And your team has to break it loose, untie it, and whoever gets it on first wins. Fire hose race, you have, again, you have the family of four, or friends, and I put up race gates, and everyone starts, it's a timed event, and who can get through the uh, race gates or the course, the fastest is the fastest team. They have to hold the fire hose, they cannot let go or they're disqualified. War, well, we have families of uh, teams of four, and this is, of course, just for fun. So, what we're doing is we bring out the uh, snow making hose, and families of four get together, and you know, we just did it. It was just a great time, and the winners did well, except all except for our, my brother and my grudge match. We didn't do so well.
gerekiyor. Snowmobile Hill Climb this year is our first attempt. Uperfest is all about family, winter and fun, and winter events. So I wanted to include the snowmobilers. You know, it's been a little tough this year with our trails and they've got these sleds, they want to get out and play. Well, so did I. So we came out there and it was a great event. It was up our Freya run. Conditions are great. They all had a great time. had a dozen or so, a little over a dozen racers, but we had some people come up from Milwaukee. We got some locals here. It was really nice to get them from Milwaukee and Sheboygan area also. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna do it. I really want, because my dad, he's been teaching me how to ride and take me, taking me out for riding before, and I really enjoy it. It's it's one of the most important times of the year when we can go out in the woods and I can ride my snowmobile, he can ride a snowmobile. We go out on the lake, we go anywhere. It's It's just a big part of what we do in the winter.
During the winter, you can find all sorts of racing. Snowshoe races, bike races, dog sled races, snowmobile races, ski races, and even motorcycle and ATV races. Well, add one more to the list, stock car races. We've been doing this for 25 years down here in Marinette. It started out as a once a year with our Winterfest and gradually it, it grew into a four race series. We have front wheel drive four cylinder cars, we have front wheel drive six cylinder cars, and we have rear wheel drive V8 cars. And those cars are racing on, believe it or not, the same tires you guys drive to the store every day. They do a little work to them so they get a little bit more traction. And then the fourth division, uh, what I'll be racing today is a four cylinder front wheel drive studded car. Take a brand new tire and we put seven or 800 drywall screws in them so they stick out three eighths of an inch and we go race on those. These are purpose-built ice racing cars. If the difference between one of our rear-wheel drive cars and the street stock in Norway is the Norway car probably weighs 3,000 pounds with the driver in it, and these cars here weigh anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000 pounds. You want a lot of traction. You know, it, it, that concept of putting sandbags in your trunk when you're trying to get traction in the winter, kind of the same, the same concept applies here. They have lead mounted. They have big steel I-beams on the cars because you're going to run into each other. Our studded cars, we, we try to reduce the weight a little bit because we actually do have traction with the studded tires. Uh, we try to keep things light, but the, there really isn't much other than, you know, they have an engine and they go forward is probably the only similarities between these cars and the Norway Speedway cars. All right, this is one of our rear wheel drives, a 77 Impala 350 Chevy engine. This tire right here is uh, a Tow City recap from North Carolina. And you find that kind of odd because North Carolina, they probably never see snow or ice, but yet they make the best ice racing tires there is. This car is owned by Travis Rydell. He's probably the winningest ice racer I've ever met in my life. He's been doing it for 25 years. He's probably won over 100 features. You know, everybody's got their little tricks and nuances on what to do with the tires. Obviously, Travis has got it figured out. He's been doing it for so long and he's so successful at it. But the only thing different between this one and the one that was getting groceries in 1977 is he, he rebuilt the engine and he's got a little bit of iron on it. We talked about before the difference between the, the Norway Super Stocks and the Nice cars. There's a whole bunch of iron on this because there is contact. As you can see, you know, we got a little bit of paint on here. It's beat up a little bit, but that's what happens on the ice. You got to make these things durable. You got to finish the race to finish first. So, you know, Travis built a, a great car here. The thing's built like a tank and he's raced it 15 years and still going strong. Fairly good speed down here, probably 75, 80 miles an hour on this third mile track. The track here in Marinette is pretty much the same size as Norway Speedway in Norway, Michigan. And basically what this is, is just something to do in the winter. We've been doing it for, like I said, 25 years and the club gets bigger and bigger every year. It's 50 degrees here, that does not uh, make for great racing. You can see there's water on the track already, so Mother Nature's not cooperating. It's great for the month of February up here in, in Wisconsin and Upper Michigan, but when you, when you ice race, this isn't great weather. And you can see we've got these safety cones. What happened is last week we have our night race, and there was a hole that started in the track, and then as the cars go through this corner, it just suctions water out of the track, it stays up. The cold just gets bigger and bigger after each lap, so 
like what we did today, instead of trying to plow a new track because there's not a lot of snow here on the bay, we're just going to have to go around these cones. We just went from probably a third mile track to almost a half mile track now on the outside. So, uh, you know, that's just the conditions we deal with. Two years ago when we had that brutal winter, we had four great weeks of racing. This year we, we only get to race for three times. So, you know, it, it's last year we didn't even get to race because the winter was so warm and we couldn't get down on the racetrack. So, you know, that's just... It's just uh, you got to play that hand you're dealt with every winter, and, and we can't really. We, we try to make a four race schedule, sometimes five if we, we get the, the cold weather, but you know, Mother Nature is ultimately in charge and, and she dictates whether we race or not. All right, this one here is a studded car. Uh, it's a 1991 Chevy Beretta. Uh, we got the quad four engine in it. And there's not a whole lot different between the one that's driving on the street and this race car, except the roll cage. And basically what we do is we take a brand new tire and we put probably seven to 800 drywall screws in it. it. Takes about eight to nine hours to make a tire. Now if you look at some of the cars out here, they, they just knocked the windows out and they went racing. Uh, I kind of like a little bit of comfort, so we put plastic windows on here, I can get in and out. We've got heat, we've got defrost, I'm not into that racing in 20 below zero stuff, but just got a, uh, just a, a standard roll cage and plain little dash and that's all we did. No, in all seriousness, you have to have defrost in these cars because when we're out on the track, especially today, you're going to have water all over the windshield. Uh, these studded tires create snow dust as we race, so that comes on the windshield. If you can't wipe it off, you just can't see. I had last uh, two weeks ago, we had a windshield wiper actually break on us. I've never seen that before, but we had a windshield wiper break. I couldn't see out the window. You don't go fast. When you're going that fast, the, obviously your windshield temperatures drop. I've seen cars that hit the water puddle and their, their windshield turns to ice instantly. So most cars uh, have their windows knocked out. Some don't, but you have to have defrost to keep the windshield warm or you're not going to be able to see after one lap. So basically these cars are what you were driving eight, nine, ten years ago. There's not, not a whole lot done to them, especially we call them the rubber tire division, the cars that don't have studs. You can put a lot of money into an engine, you can put a lot of money into lightweight parts, but ultimately you're on ice and a lot of that just doesn't show up. So if you want to get into racing, it's a very cheap and safe venue to go racing. Let's say you, you know maybe you're thinking about going and racing at Escanaba or or Norway and you're just a little bit of worry you're worried about the money you're worried about you know maybe the safety aspect of it this ice racing uh, very cheap a lot of these cars if you look in the pits a lot of these cars all they did was they knocked the lights out they took the plastic off the car they put some steel rubber rails on the car and they went racing that's all they did I mean that's you know back in the day in stock car racing started that's what that's what everybody did and, and obviously nowadays that's that's not the case. I mean, there's you know there's purpose-built engines, there's purpose-built lightweight parts and, and stuff like that. But for the most part, if you you look at these cars that are in the pit area, these are knock the windows out, knock the lights out, knock the plastic off of it, put some uh, ice racing tires on, and, and let's go. And, and it's you know for three or four hundred dollars, you could be down here having fun with us. If you're standing in the pits right now, you can hear a lot of impact guns running. And what's happening? And believe it or not, we're trying to put on tires that actually drive better in this wet condition. We took the, the good, we call them the ice tires that you saw at the beginning of the show, and because of the, the amount of water that's built on the track, they're switching to a tire they call a co-op, and this basically looks like something you'll find on a, on a hay wagon or something in a farm field. But they're psyched and they got these big knobs on them, they're grooved, and what that does, it tries to keep the car up out of the water a little bit. There's a little bit better traction with these tires in the wet. You'd never want to run them on a really cold track where we don't have any water, but what this is going to do is make the car drive extremely better with the wet uh, conditions we have. Believe it or not, you can actually dictate how your car handles with tires on this ice.
usually start racing the last weekend of January and we go every Saturday from the end of January to the end of February. So keep that in mind for next year. You can follow all we do on our Facebook page, Eminem Icebreakers. We have all our rules, we have all our events listed. We ask for a $5 donation for the spectator parking and you can have one person in the car, you can have 10 in the car, it doesn't matter to us. And what that donation goes for is uh, porta potties, uh, garbage cleanup, stuff like that. I mean, it, this is a low dollar operation, but it still costs money to put these races on with the Eminem Icebreakers. And a $5 donation for about four hours of entertainment, you know, that's, you can't find that anywhere. You go, you, you look at the cost of a movie or a baseball game or, you know, three or four hours of entertainment there, it's going to cost you 30 40 $50 to take a family of four. Five bucks, come on down, great entertainment. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Discovering.